Well, uh, so what are we going to do today, uh, Cousin P.W.? The same thing we do every day, Melvin. Try to take over the neighborhood. Hey y'all, Bloodwing here, back to bring some grumpiness to your internet. It's time once again for Heifer of the Week, and this time we have a very special guest, someone that whose face or name will likely be very familiar to you, and her name is Marina Shutup. Well, ain't that the, ain't that the Philly... Their cousin B.W. that was on the live stream once with Barry uh, to explain her feminism and, and to talk about dogpiling and all that. Yep, that's right, Melvin. That's the one. She also done a video about uh, after Trump's election, how, how come uh, everybody had a right to be upset and blamed it all on white people. Same girl. But we're going to take a look at a new video that she's made, recent one. A few of others have already done on this, but this was by request. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And she's going to explain to us why the anti-Trump protesters are not going overboard. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. Heifer of the the Week. The Week. At the time of filming this video, it's January 5th, which means that Trump becomes president in 14 days, 11 hours, and 46 minutes. Well, let me be the first to just really make your day there, Marina. At the time of recording this, it's now the 15th, and you have five days to go before Trump is president. I'm too lazy to count up the minutes and the seconds, and not near anal enough. But who's counting? So, title of this video, Are Trump Protesters Overreacting? No. Well, well, there you have it there, Cousin B.W. She said, no, they're not overreacting, so that's it. End the video. Boy, this was sure a short one. Yeah, this is pretty typical of her, Melvin. Uh, her and her sort. Um, you know, no facts, just their think so's based on their feels. And there's nothing wrong with an opinion piece. But if that's what it's going to be, then you should say, well, in my opinion, no. But she states it like it's a blatant fact. Uh, I'm unsurprised. In the wake of the impending Trump presidency, I hear a lot of people saying things like, give Trump a chance. This is how democracy works. SJWs are the reason that Trump was elected in the first place. So us saying that racism exists and is a problem and calling out that racism by educating others led to you electing a racist? That makes sense. No, you sal. That's not what we're saying, and you know it. What got Trump elected was you and your lot calling anybody that disagreed with him a racist, anybody that disagreed with him a misogynist, or a freaking white male, or anything else you could think up. That's what got him elected. People got tired of being crapped on. And they wanted a change from the liberal leanings of this country for the last eight years. It's, it's, it's raised a generation of idiots, and we're tired of it. Oh, and a pro tip, don't start conversations by telling someone that, let me educate you. It's a huge turnoff, and... The brain instantly shuts down. Just saying. So if you're watching this video, then you may or may not be familiar with another video I put up shortly after Trump was elected called If You Voted for Trump. That was a way for me to get out my emotions and kind of echo a lot of similar emotions that I saw people around me also expressing. Oh yeah, Cousin B.W., he played that one for me right after you uh, put it out. And I, I gotta tell you, what I heard was more crying than, than you're gonna more crying and whining and boohooing and you're gonna hear in a baby nursery and in the hospital i think a lot of people are afraid right now and i don't think that that fear is irrational i turn on the news and i see horrifying images of people being decimated in aleppo which all happened under your precious president obama by the way the cia has literally confirmed that russia interfered in our election no, they didn't, and even WikiLeaks, which broke that news, has said it didn't 
come from Russia. And apparently China has some nukes that has just been showing off. It's a really scary political climate right now, and I don't think that people being afraid of what this upcoming presidency might mean is misplaced at all. And for my entire 56 years on this planet, China has, from time to time, always been saber-rattling. You're right, it's a scary time. There's been lots of scary times. When I was a kid, it was the Cuban Missile Crisis, which we actually did come within a hair of blowing ourselves sky high. This is nothing. This is overreaction. That's what this is. Oh, don't even get me started on that, Marina. Because the Affordable Care Act was anything but. It done just the opposite. Whereas I had affordable insurance through my wife's work with $15 office visits and $10 prescriptions, I now have a doubled premium and a huge deductible that must be met before they even kick in, which we cannot afford because we're working poor. So consequently, because of the Affordable Care Act, I've not been able to go to the doctor since it was enacted. And I have a disease that needs constant treatment. As you can tell, I'm a little bit adamant about this one. And I don't care what else Trump does when he's in office. If he can fix this, then I claim his presidency a raging success. I got a lot of harassment and anger and hate in the comments of my Trump video. And that was partially because a certain um, angry atheist on the internet with a million followers made a response to that, but also I think because it was a pretty emotional video and I didn't get to articulate why I felt that way, um, people just kind of made a lot of assumptions. Oh, I've seen that video several times over and I thought you articulated your point very well. You made it very clear how you felt that it was all white people's fault and that all people of color, all people of different sexual orientations other than straight, uh, all social, social justice warriors should be afraid for their lives because they're all either going to be dead or in concentration camps when the jack-booted Trump police come for you. But way to deflect and way to blame it on somebody that has a million subs? Eh, not quite. A lot, but not that many. No, you got a lot of hate, sweetheart, because you're stupid. But at least you're going to explain yourself better now, right? Let's uh, give it a benefit of the doubt and see what you got. So I wanted to take the time to explain why it is that I'm afraid. Okay, so let's start with everything Trump has said. So, starting off strong already. Well, I, I can't tell if she really thinks that's funny or if she really believes that that's a valid argument. I mean, historically speaking, requiring populations that you've systematically primed your supporters to hate and fear to register for a special list so it's easier to target them is not a great sign. There was Proclamation 2537, which required Japanese, Italian, and German people to register with the Department of Defense, and following that, Japanese people were put into internment camps, which was fun. And what was that other list? just feel like I'm missing something. Now, if you followed me for a little bit, you know I'm not a very political person. And some of you are. I watch some of the comments out there, and I'm amazed at how much you know about politics. So I'm sure that if I'm wrong here, you'll correct me. And please do, because I'm just really not that political. But as far as I'm aware, Trump really never said that. What he has said is that he wants stricter, stricter restrictions of Muslims immigrating from certain areas of the Middle East, areas that are known for terrorism, which seems like a perfectly fine idea to me. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Donald Trump, America's sexist, overbearing father who not so secretly thinks his daughter is kind of hot. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. You know? Stop it! Oh, it's so weird! Stop you know it! 
as I said, I'm not a very political person, so I actually had to go back and look at the transcripts for this interview, which happened in Wisconsin, was conducted by Chris Matthews. And if you look at the transcripts, you can tell he was trying to get his point across, which admittedly he wasn't doing very well, but by getting Chris to see who is a Catholic, but he's also not pro-life, which is against what his church believes. Trying to get him to see that you can believe something, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to change something. Yes, Trump admits to being pro-life, but that doesn't mean he's going to be able to change those laws. Probably couldn't if he wanted to, because it has to go through so many steps. But never mind the fact that he later, during the when the firestorm that followed that interview, clarified his statements and said unequivocally that if if it was banned, the punishment would be upon the person performing the abortion, not the woman. And that by saying the woman was punished, he was trying to say, badly, again I will add, he was trying to say that there'll be punishment for the woman as if she'll go through trauma emotionally and so forth, as many women do after abortion. But you leave that part out, don't you? That he changed his statements. And it's not like your candidate Clinton, and I didn't vote for Trump, by the way, but it's not like your candidate Clinton didn't retract a lot of stuff and things along the way. It's... This is just like the fake news everybody's talking about now. You only talk about what suits your narrative, but you don't talk about what came later. He clarified his position on this. Oh, and by the way, dig at him about his daughter. That, that stuff's getting old. Again, he didn't equate himself very well. He's, no one said he's a great orator like Ronald Reagan. But as the father of two lovely young girls, I understand where he's coming from. Did his way of telling it come across a little creepy? Yeah. But, you know, every father thinks their daughter is beautiful. And his daughter is beautiful. And so are mine. The next one is a big one. A cornerstone of Donald Trump's presidential campaign. And it's almost as big as the wall he wants to build to keep out a growing list of marginalized communities. Such as immigrants, Muslims... Rosie O'Donnell, and I'm sure he'll come up with something else next. And you make this one of your points, but you never do really address it. You go on from here for talking about some of his choices for his cabinet. And I'll get to Rosie O'Donnell here in just a minute or a touch on it. But the wall's not for all that, you moron. It's for Mexico, and it's not for keeping out all Mexicans. Trump has, and the rest of us, have no problem with legal immigration. But we don't want illegal immigration. It puts undue strain on the system. I'm not going to go, I'd be here all day if I talked about all the evils of illegal immigration. But it's just a point you don't even bring up or address. Typical. Even more so than Trump himself, who is basically requiring extra tutoring from Obama because he, quote, is surprised at the scope of the president's duties. What scares me even more are the people that he's choosing to surround himself with. Reince? Reince? Priebus? Reince Priebus? Who sounds like a real-life Disney villain. You know, I'm starting to see this as a typical tactic of her ilk lately, making fun of people's name, uh, uh, quote, humorously, unquote, unable to pronounce them. The last time I laughed at something like that, I think I was in junior high. Is Trump's pick for chief of staff. He assures us that the Trump administration is not interested in a registry for Muslims, but it worries me that they had to dispel that rumor in the first place. Well, not so much a rumor as it was a direct quote from Trump himself or Trump's national security advisor who once said, Fear of Muslims is rational. Is it, though? And that quote did not prove the point you were trying to make there that they wanted to make a list. He just spoke about fear of Muslims being rational. And with your common condescending tone, 
and your snarky attitude, you went, is it though? Yeah, it really is, considering all the terrorism that seems to come from Muslim culture. That's why Trump wants to put a slowdown on immigration from certain areas till we get this thing figured out. Yeah, it's rational to fear what we see happening in Europe in the Middle East. Priebus did, however, say that he would like to put a freeze on immigration from areas where terrorists are from. So you mean... Well, what about... Oh, I have one. Yeah, I see what you did there. But it has nothing to do with what you're talking about. We're talking about Muslim terrorism. And you're pointing out homegrown terrorism. Not much we can do to ban... Uh, to keep that out, can we? Other than punish it when we find it or try to catch it before it turns it turns up. Since they're already here and we're born here. But here, two can play that game. Since this video is supposed to be about our Trump protesters going overboard, let's take a look at a couple of my own. Shall we? Fuck Donald Trump, nigga. Fuck white people, boy. <laughs> Yeah, kind of interesting and uh, different when it's on the other foot, isn't it, Marina? And I'm not going to go through the rest of this. It's just her maliciously and childishly picking at his picks for his cabinet, which I'm not on board with all of them either, but uh, I just cannot put up with another minute of her. Anyway, I rate Bear. You owe me for this one. And uh, there you have it. That is our winner of this week's Heifer of the Week. And as always, folks, get out of my yard.